I suppose a lot of our listening audience is quite familiar with with who we are as a firm at Nelson Financial Planning. Maybe you're a client, maybe you're a listen, regular listener to the radio show or the podcast, uh, or shoot, maybe you're listening to us for the very first time. But but you know at the end of the day that our focus is on 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 helping people. We we say that all the time, you know, helping you change your life with a successful and cost effective financial plan. I mean, constantly I think I say that in every segment. At least that's what my marketing people tell me to 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 do. Um, and so one of the things that is unique about us is that we we don't have any particular account minimums. I mean, the, the, the reality is we think that that's pretty important because if we are truly here to help people, which we say that we are, then the only way to actually help people is to help all people. And regardless of whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or whether you're at retirement, you should want to be able to assist people no matter where they are in their financial journey. So that's why we don't have account minimums. and. In, in industry terms, uh, people would say that we serve sort of the mass affluent because we're not uh, specifically going after high net worth or ultra high net worth individuals. High net worth individuals typically described in the financial industry as folks with 1 million to 2 million of invested assets, ultra high net worth. Okay, I've got 5 million of invested assets. And, and <laughs> you know, when I think about uh, other firms and God love it, I, I mean, you know, w w I just think we're relatively unique. I, I just think that a lot of firms, if you're positioning for high net worth or ultra high net worth I investors, it, it just seems to me like your entire business is predicated on you know, sort of like hunting for elephants. I mean, right? I mean, you're looking for the people that have uh, big dollars and, oh, I've got an account minimum, so I don't want to really talk to anybody that's got like 100 grand, that, that, that kind of thing. Even though they, the person with 100 grand probably needs your help much more than the person with $5 million. I'm just, I'm just saying, if you got $5 million, yeah, okay, you don't need an Einstein financial planner to say, well, you're probably okay unless you're spending a million dollars a year, then that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, our philosophy is and has always been and will always be to, to kind of, I guess, to continue the, the hunting comparison. Um, if you think of if you've ever been to Africa, you know, there's elephants there. Yeah, sure. But I mean, you look around and you're going to see a lot more antelope and wildebeest and zebras and all, all of that. So th th that's plenty of game, if you will, from a pure business uh, per, per perspective. So one of the things I never really understand about the industry is kind of why the target is, oh, you got to have a certain amount of money. And I'm like, there's a, there's a sea of people. From industry terms perspective, then folks would categorize us as serving sort of that mass affluent where maybe you don't have $5 million, but instead you got 500000 that kind of thing. So, uh, and I just, you know, as I've said repeatedly on the show, I, I just don't quite understand the, the, the notion of how you can really say that you help people if you're excluding people. But hey, that's just me. Frankly, to be candid, I, I find that, you know, sort of normal folks are kind of much more interesting, if you will, than, you know, kind of doctors, lawyers, not that doctors and lawyers aren't interesting, but I, I just like the stories that normal people share with me on a regular basis. Again, not trying to slight doctors or lawyers, we've got plenty of them as clients as well, but I, I, I just think normal human beings often have much more interesting stories to, to tell about what they've been through and what they're going through on a personal basis. And I guess part of that is that I can relate, if you will, to, to trying to figure things out financially, to, to, to certainly struggling to figure it out all, all about. And I don't often talk about my, my, my personal story, but I mean, my personal story is that I was uh, brought up by my mother and, and, and grandmother, and we lived in a, in a you know, kind of traditional or not traditional three-generation household. So it was my grandmother, my mother, my sister, and my, my, myself. And my mom, you know, was divorced when I was a baby. She was a school teacher, so not exactly a ton of money coming in there. My grandmother lost her husband when he was in his 50s. So, so just kind of living, you know, Social Security just coming in, 
in there. Um, you know, so there we were, three generations, one bath house. Um, my mom, my grandmother was collecting widow's benefit under Social Security. My mom was a school teacher, and, and really, that wasn't at all what she studied or studied or went to college for or did any of that stuff. It was really the decision to become a school teacher was really to kind of match um, the, the 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 kids or children's schedule, if you will, right? Because you know that way we could go to school with her, same school, because it, back there, back then, you were able to kind of have your kids, even if you it wasn't in your district, you wound up or in your location. If you taught at that school, the, your, your kids could come come with you. So we went to elementary school at a, a, a really, really small town in Maine called Chelsea. Um, and uh, it's outside of Augusta, which is a pretty small town in its own right. But um, but but that's kind of how the the, the, the the background was. And to say that money was tight, I mean, that that would be an understatement. That is uh, that is for sure. Um so that, that's the environment that I grew up in. Uh, never traveled. I got my first airplane when I was 17. Uh, never left the country until I was like 22. I've been to 50 countries since then, but that's because I really enjoy traveling. And um, so, but, but, but that was kind of the background. And so, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think our roots are always our roots and, and kind of what we were brought up with and what we were around. And, and so I think this is a fundal, fundamental aspect of our nature and kind of how we run the business at, at Nelson Financial Planning. And that's why we kind of focus on, you know, the, the no account minimums. We, we talk about in our tagline being as cost effective as possible. And, and the reality is our, our clients are the direct beneficiaries of that. The higher your cost, okay, if you're an investor, the higher the cost, the less your return. It's that simple. 80% of our clients pay 0.25% per annum. That's pretty cost effective when the rest of the industry is kind of one, one and a half. Uh, the rest are kind of on a platform that will pay one, that pays 1%, uh, but it is automatically set up to reduce down to 0.25%. So eventually they'll get to that level as well. Uh, after a period of eight years, that's automatic. That's kind of how we like rewarding long-term relationships. So that's kind of the, the, the structure, if you will. And, and folks, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's really cost effective. And then I guess lastly, I would say, just from a personal philosophy, I also think that I like the fact that I am actually making a difference. Go back to what I was saying earlier, you got 5 million bucks, eh, as long as you're not, you know, spending a million dollars a year or something like that, eh, you're probably in pretty good shape, right? I actually like to make a difference and to help people retire or realize that they retire or get them on a path to retiring over time. Because yeah, if you got a bunch of money, then shouldn't be all that hard at the end of the day. But here, here's the point of why the costs make such a difference. And, and, and these numbers, I mean, they're, they're just gonna, they're just gonna really strike you. So if you think about the normal length of time of retirement, right? So, so let's say that that's 30 years. Okay. Might be, that might be a little long, maybe 25, but anyway, I ran the numbers at 30. So you got to stay with me. So if we look at 30 years and let's say uh, you had $500,000 in your portfolio. Okay. And we assume an 8% return. So when we talk about expenses, like the difference between one versus 0.25, well, that's actually 0 0.75. We actually ran it on 0 0.5, just, 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 just for fun, not to kind of get too far out there in terms of the, in, in terms of the example. And the numbers are going to be are, are staggering when you stop to think about it. So if you had $500,000 and you're making 8%, then over a 30-year period of time, that 500000 grows to just a little over $5 million, $5,031,328 to be exact. Okay? That's still an amazing number. It's just the power of time and compounding and all of those kinds of investment principles that come together. If, on the other hand, your expenses were just 0.5% higher per year, you know how much that costs you off that 5 million bucks? Over $600,000. If you don't think expenses don't matter, they do. And when you start to run the numbers on it and look at it over time, it is staggering. Let me say that again. A difference of 0.5% per year in expenses makes a $600,000 plus difference over 
the course of a 30 year, starting out with just a $500,000 investment. Pretty staggering numbers, right? We're going to have more on this when we return here on Dollars and Cents. This is Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. Uh, Stay tuned with us through the break and we'll continue the conversation.